Hey, time for chapter 12 of The Girl Who Speaks Bear by Sophie Anderson, illustrated by Catherine Honesta and published by Osborne. Well done, Osborne, for this nice book. Chapter 12 is called The Wolf Pack. Yuri is frozen stiff. His breathing is weak. I rub his neck and chest until he stirs to life. Hold him tight, Mousetrap barks. Why? Because he'll bolt when he hears the smell of wolves. They'll run him down easily in the state he's in. I wrap my arms around Yuri's neck as he takes a deep breath and opens his eyes. Wolves! He squeals. His eyes roll in their sockets and he struggles to stand. Prey animals! Smousetrap scoffs. He jumps onto Yuri's head and talks into his ear. You're all the same, fleeing at the first whiff of danger. But you shouldn't do that with wolves. They'll chase you into a trap, a thicket or in gully, and they'll be on you before you know what's happened. Oh, help! Yuri cries, and his hooves thrash against the earth. You're making him panic. I glare at Mousetrap and tighten my grip on Yuri. It's all right. I'll protect you. I promise. My voice is steady, the opposite of how I feel, but acting strong for Yuri is like scaffolding for myself. You'll be my herd. Yuri stops struggling and he looks from me to Mousetrap. For now, I nod. Come on, get up. I help Yuri onto his hooves. He's young, but he's already tall enough to look me in the eye. We'll follow the river. I stare into the shadows upstream, wondering how far away Anatoly's next cabin is. I don't know where we are and it's too dark to read my map. Mousetrap points his nose into the pines away from the river. I smell food cooking and hear singing on the breeze. I listen and sniff the air, but I don't hear singing or smell any food. You sure? I remember the map showing Anatoly's cabin on the riverbank, not amongst pines. Of course I'm sure. Mousetrap scowls so ferociously I lower my head and walk in the direction he suggested. My clothes are crusted with ice and I'm frozen to the bone. If I'm going to survive the night, wolves or not, I need a shelter. And it's possible Anatoly's cabin might be a little way into the forest, but still look close to the river on the map. Yuri and I make so much noise walking between the tightly packed trees, it's impossible to listen for stalking wolves. But if there are any, they'll know where we are. Mousetrap reluctantly leads us down a slope, muttering it's too far to walk around. He orders us to be quiet. But we skid down the hill on slush, and we collapse at the bottom in a series of splashes and thuds. Suddenly, Yuri screams, the same deafening, ear-splitting noise he made when he fell through the ice. I frown at him, confused, but then I make out a writhing dark creature on top of him. A wolf. Teeth flash as they bite into Yuri's rump. Before I can move, a second wolf darts in and grabs one of Yuri's back legs. Another surge of movement and a third lands on his front legs too. My gaze flits from wolf to wolf as I try to work out what to do. Panic speeds my heart and fogs my brain. Mousetrap trembles on my shoulder and then leaps into action. He moves like a streak of copper through the dark, bursting from one wolf to the next. Yelps rise in the air, followed by snarls and barks. Mousetrap bites a nose, tears an ear, nips an eyelid. He moves so fast he's out of range by the time each wolf snaps at him. Yuri lurches up, kicking out at the wolves as he staggers away. A hoof lands in a stomach and a wolf yells in pain, but it jumps back up, bearing long, gleaming fangs. Finally, my muscles surge into life. I push past Yuri and a roar explodes out of me, so loud that the forest shakes with the force of it. The wolves instantly scatter into the trees, and I stare after them, lungs burning, unsure if I'm more shocked by the noise I made or by them fleeing. Come on, before they regroup and attack again. Mousetrap runs up my arm. He's still trembling, licking blood from his teeth. I realise he does shake with fury after all. You are brilliant, I whisper to Mousetrap as I step over a ditch to Yuri. I know, Mousetrap curls around my neck. His tiny body burns with heat. You shouldn't sound so surprised, though. I told you I'm an exceptional hunter. Yuri groans and I peer at his wound in the dim starlight. 
Spots of blood ooze from bite and claw marks on his back and legs. There's a nasty open cut on his rump. It's the sort of wound that Mamochka would close with aloe leaves and smother with a balsam she makes from beeswax and sandalwood and other secret ingredients. Just the memory of its scent is healing. How are you feeling? I ruffle the woolly fur around Yuri's neck. Sore, Yuri snorts, and cold. Keep walking, Mousetrap urges. It isn't far now. Guided by Mousetrap on my shoulder, I lead the way, attempting to clear a path for Yuri, who keeps getting tangled in knotted shoots and thorny briars. Though my muscles are working hard, I'm ice cold. The forest here feels hostile, like it's trying to block our path. Finally, despite the wind pushing us back, yellow light glows through a snarl of spiky branches ahead. I squeeze between two gnarled old tree trunks, which seem to move closer together to shut us out. We see a clearing in a corner of a cabin. Stop! Mousetrap grabs my ear. His sharp claws pierce my skin. What? I snap. It's one of Anatoly's cabins. No, it's not! Of course it is! I try to brush Mousetrap's paw from my ear without knocking him to the ground. Only Anatoly has cabins in the forest. I smell bones! Mousetrap sniffs the air. So, you said you smelled cooking before, remember? Mousetrap's claws dig deeper into my ear. You don't understand. I smell human bones. That's the end of chapter 12. Human bones. Who would live in a house with human bones? Perhaps if you've read any other books by Sophie Anderson, you might have a guess who we're going to meet in the next chapter. If not, I'll see you soon. Bye.